All right, so we've just talked about elastic properties, and now I want to move into what we term plastic properties. Those are the ones that don't recover. And the first module here is going to talk about the yield point, and I'll talk about what that means. Okay, so after the elastic behavior, so most materials undergo an elastic deformation, and that is that recoverable portion. And most of them have, or a fair deal of them, such as metals, have a linear elastic portion. So this is the point, this is the portion we're talking about. And again, this is elastic deformation, which means reversible. So up to this point P, um, if we unload the material, it's going to go back to its original size and shape. However, once it reaches this point P, you notice that it's actually starting to deviate from the linear behavior. And that's one of the indications we can have that there's something else happening, and that's where we have plastic deformation. And this particular point is known as the proportionality limit, P, um, and it's the what we term the initial onset. So basically the very first indication the, of plastic deformation. However, um, this is often very difficult to find exactly uh, because strains are very small. And so the, the right when it uh, deviates from linear behavior is very difficult to find. So instead, we rely on a slightly uh, more obvious indication, and we call that noticeable plastic deformation uh, has occurred, and that's the yield strength or yield point. And so this is where we uh, effectively say that plastic deformation has happened. So there's this area in between that may be small, may be slightly larger, uh, where there is plastic deformation occurring, but it's on a small scale and we, and we can't really detect it. So this is our yield strength, sigma y, and we have noticeable plastic deformation occurring. So materials that yield have this yield strength undergo plastic deformation. So that's what we mean by yielding. Yielding means it's now undergoing permanent slash plastic deformation. And these materials can undergo two types. The most common type of plastic deformation or yield point is this very gradual that we saw in the previous slide, where it goes from linear and then it very gradually transitions um, to nonlinear behavior. And uh, so that's the one part. Uh, so we just kind of refer to that as gradual or normal yield behavior. The other one, which is far more selective and doesn't occur in a lot of materials, uh, but is known as the yield point phenomenon. This is common in what we term plain carbon steels. Um, exhibits this type of behavior where, again, it's linear, and then it reaches a certain point, and it actually drops uh, fairly suddenly. And then at that, uh, it reaches kind of a plateau, uh, and it kind of deviates slightly, but more or less uh, remains flat for a bit, and then goes back up into nonlinear plastic behavior. This is known as yield point phenomenon, and we term this bottom part the lower yield point, and this the upper yield point. And in this case, uh, we define, uh, we'll talk in, in the next slide about how we define the actual yield strength value. Okay, so for that yield point phenomenon, the lower yield point, so this value right here, as you can see indicated over here, is the yield strength. So if you look up the value for yield strength, you know this is where we're going to start to get um, plastic deformation, which in most design criteria, you know you don't want your material to permanently deform. That's that's bad, uh, and so this is something that we want to avoid, and so this is the value that we use as the yield point or the yield strength, um, and so that's the amount of stress it can handle before it plastically deforms. And so that's what we use. We use the lower, the average of this lower value that we see. So again, I said it's common in low carbon steels. And we also uh, can see when this happens, if you actually look at the test sample, uh, we get this phenomenon uh, or this appearance of these distinct bands um, at uh, angles uh, along the test sample. And they're known as looters bands. And so the appearance of this uh, low yield point 
the lower and upper yield point um, coincides with looters bans, uh, which uh, we're not going to talk about much here, but basically um, it's uh, a phenomenon that only happens in this low carbon steel for the most part. All right, so for everything else that undergoes this more gradual yield point that we see, the yield strength is defined in a different way. And it's defined by what, by what we call the offset method. So specifically for us in the US, uh, we use the 0.2% offset. So that's a offset of 0 0.002, the value of strain. Um, in uh, the UK or other countries, uh, they can sometimes use slightly different offsets. Uh, I believe 0.5 is fairly common as well. But again, 0.2 is what we use here in the US. Um, so um, we define it. And so we're basically trying to find this point where we have noticeable plastic deformation. So what we do is we take this linear region that we see, the elastic portion, and we basically um, offset it by 0 0.002. And so we shift it over here and we make that linear line, uh, and that's what you see here dashed, and we make it and we keep going and we find the point where it intersects our curve. And this value in st uh, stress is known as our yield strength. So we offset uh, and we find the intersection between the uh, new line that we've created with the uh, elastic modulus, the slope, right? And where it intersects the curve, which is up here for this plot. So we draw a line parallel uh, to the elastic portion, offset it by 0 0.002 of the strain down here. Um, and then we determine uh, the stress value of where that intersects. So again, this is most materials that exhibit, most plastic materials exhibit this type um, that don't have that yield point phenomenon. All right, and so this is just kind of showing you the, the procedure uh, visually. All right, so along with that, I also wanna kinda talk about what happens now that uh, when the material is deformed, but then is unloaded, right? Because before, if we were just talking about elastic strain or stress, um, it was all recovered, right? So it went back to the original shape. However, now if we plastically deform it, it won't fully return to the original shape. So let's look at this in terms of a stress strain curve. So let's say that you load it, right? So we apply some strain and we pass the yield point that's up here, um, and we go up to this point. So we've strained it this amount, uh, we've, it's required this amount of stress. Um, and so if we return, it, you know, if we unload or remove the stress, it's not going to uh, uh, go back to the original point because you can see here, this is plastic deformation, it's permanent. So what happens is we follow the endpoint here and it's unloaded. So basically it goes back down and it goes back down in the same uh, fashion as it goes up, right? Because that's the elastic portion, that's the slope. That's telling us about the elastic modulus. And so if you go back down, you see that it returns and it's right here, right? Well, this value of strain is more than the zero. So it has increased in size, but there is also some portion. So you see here, this point D is where we unloaded uh, but it recovered some strain value, right? So this difference is the elastic strain that's recovered. And so that's a, a point that's uh, uh, useful to remember is that even though we have plastic deformation, you still can have a, a change in shape or size because of the elastic strain that's recovered after you unload the, the sample. And so that's what you see here. It's uh, stressed and tension to point D, then unloaded and returns the zero stress, but it follows the elastic modulus, meaning that some elastic strain is recovered and the rest is the plastic strain. So then if we reapply it, we see that we go back up the same portion and then at point D, you see it here it follows the same kind of line from, from here and continues to plastically deform. So that's just kind of to get you starting to think about, uh, even though we're talking about plastic deformation, we still can't forget the elastic portion in this as well.